Glad to hear it. We're going to attack on two fronts, the north gate and the west wall, which will scale with ladders. The attack will be split into different stages. Taking the outer wall... Oh, I'm quite, the quite excited, gate, quite excited. The castle and the tower. <laughs> finally, we're doing the siege. How are we going to attack the gate? We'll try to do as much damage as we can with the trebuchet first. Kieser claims he can even hit it directly. Even if that's true, we'll have to charge through a downpour of enemy arrows all the way to the portcullis. Portcullis? Fortunately, it's wooden, so we'll be able to break it down. But dealing with the defense <laughs> in the bailey won't be easy. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. Let's I just go. Let's just fucking go. I'm just following the lead and the you objectives. You want to join the attack on the walls or on the gate. Walls. Remember, many of the Scalitz men will follow you. It could make a big difference. We've got to go walls. I'll help with the attack on the walls. Yes. I'm proud of you, Henry. You've changed from an insolent pup into a tough, reliable fighter. And as God is my witness, we will kick those whore sons' arses. A village lad and an old soldier. <laughs> this man must be shaking in his boots. <laughs> if he's not shaking, then he doesn't know what he's got coming. I need to kill that guy because he won't stop singing. No matter how good the I need to is, sniff again. Something always I'm trying not to do it into the microphone, but my nose is all fucking cloggy. Advantage of every chance. Help your comrades, and don't go rushing in where you're outnumbered. We have to take the castle gradually, one position after another. I'll remember that. Good luck to you, stripling. Good Let's fucking you, go. Old soldier. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my days, look at that. Avengers! <laughs> the portals are just going to open in the background. Nice! Charge! Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> Look at all those that I just failed. <laughs> oh shit. I'm sure it won't matter. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure nobody will care. Those floating ladders. Because the, <laughs> the men hadn't rendered in. That's funny. Shields for fuck's sake! Cover yourselves! Wait till I raise the ladders! I'm fucking getting right underneath here so I don't get shot. Let me up. Go, 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 go. I want to be first. I'm being the first motherfucker over that wall. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get so fucked. Can somebody else climb? Is anybody else climbing? Nobody else is climbing. Why am I the only person climbing? Hi, guys. Ugh! Oh! Oh shit me! Oh shit! Go! Defend! On the defense, it's fine. We'll let the Scalitz lads catch up. Oh god. Oh, I'm getting fucked. There we go. Nice. Fucking rain down hell on his head. Fuck you, you prick. Oh. 
Oh, bacon. <laughs> oh, some bacon. Go, charge! Smash them! Clear those battle mats! We outnumber them. We'll be fine. Nice. Get him. Nice. And again. Oh, God. Fuck him! <laughs> oh my days! Me, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot of fucking people. Oh, my days. Okay, thank God. We are outnumbered. We are quite severely outnumbered. Oh, fuck me. I gotta go. I gotta go. Oh, I gotta fucking go. Oh, my days. Clunk him on his head. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I like jabbed him in the eye and then he got clunked around the side of the skull. Where would they be keeping hostages? I'm going to go all the way to the top. Oh, look at this. The fucking opening. Oh, no. Him up. Yes. Uh. Come on. The fucking flank worked. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Oh my days. 
I can't believe it worked. That one guy, that one Scarlet soldier just survived for so long so that I could flank. Sir, we should give the order. Let's see if Istvan Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt feet, Hannes. Istvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. If your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own half. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back? Sir, you're all noblemen here. All bound by honor. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Radzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? If you give me your word of honor that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship. But Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scallets. Out of the question! Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig, prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honour. If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. Then, he'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honor, we have none. And without honor, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head armed. Divish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. He said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzig free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. Oh, I almost forgot. 
Your sword? I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it. As a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! Quick! To the battlements! We have to see which way they go! Oh, they really are heading for Scalitz! Mount up, Henry! You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? There's no sign of them. Move on. There! I'm glad to see Ishvan kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Well, fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! All right, Father. I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. We catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honor? Honor? If the word of honor of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honor in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarreled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, uh, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah, the sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but just then I had something else on my mind. 
Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. That's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan too. And then I'll find that German whoreson who tore at Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Vart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls. Good wine. A few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Though I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things. On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Well, there we go. Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like I just sat through like eight seasons of a TV show. <laughs> Oh my days. This was one of the most, like, uh, immersive, frustrating experiences with a video game that I've ever experienced. <laughs> Let's get off of the credits because there's probably going to be copyrighted music. Um, oh, we've got an end credit scene. But yeah, I'm going to talk about this game a bit when we when we fully finish. Doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Amma. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I, I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. As for the sword, it's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. I did what was right. I have to leave you now. Oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud.
What on earth were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. We're not done. Right. There was the credits. <laughs> the credits rolled. What do you mean we're not done? I'm ready to talk about this game. I'm ready to put what this game it? down. <laughs> it's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, that's oh, kind of sad. Over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here. Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. What are we doing now? What is happening now? Epilogue? We've only just started the epilogue! What? Go to the upper castle during the day to meet Margrave Jobst. Jobst. Oh my fucking god, I was ready to talk about this game. It's not over. Ah, oh, Hal. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. Uh, yeah. Son Henry, Henry forgot to put on his um, his armored pantaloons. Here is John the Second of Liechtenstein. <laughs> it wouldn't let counsel. me look at the inventory honored, thing properly. Gentlemen. It was all blacked Come out. Join us. Our great Jobs was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that. All this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny. And I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How they changed, Your Grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern, while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. 
Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas's journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst. Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop, too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas' faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Blech. People like him, though. Blech. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Burgolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Burgolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help, though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> Partly due to my efforts. And now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Burghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgov would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. 
Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft a letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I'm so confused. Have we got a I whole think that would be best to write it in your name. A whole Don't another mission to do? I'm so baffled. I thought we were fucking done with this game. <laughs> oh, I've got to keep going. I have to keep going. I have to keep going. We've got to keep going. Um I should put all of my shit back on. Because <laughs> I took everything off. I took everything off. Put those in my horse. No, they're better than the other things. Why aren't they on? Put them in my horse. Are we okay? We're okay. Talk to your father. What exactly am I to write? Father! Well, what isn't really the issue? The question is how? We need to learn when they stand on liberating the king. So what do you think of it all, Sir Divish? I think I don't know what to think. That makes two of us. If I didn't know anything about Yobst, I'd say he's right and absolutely truthful. But I've heard too much about him already. Hmm, likewise. But I do feel he's the one with the best chance to put things right. Well, we'll see what we learn from Burgos. If the League of Lords stands with Sigismund, then our chances pale, in spite of everything Yobst said. We shall see. We shall see. What steps they envisage so, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes, I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be travelling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Burgoff tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Very well. Burgoff is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? No, no, no. Whoa, we've got a lot of fucking questions, apparently, but no, That's not really. Problem. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush, and good luck, son. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Right, what now? Who, ha, huh? hmm? Letter. Take the letter. Give me the letter. Give me the I flaming letter. You have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now. But soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. 
He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlet's. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burgoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. Oh, congratulations, you've completed the main storyline. If you like, you can still embark on side quests and activities or just wander the world. You can end the game any time afterwards by riding off the map with Sir Hans Capon's squad. Come now, okay. Now. My men are mustered in the courtyard. We can get... Greetings. What business have you? Well, young sir, what now? Shall we ride boldly forth to adventures new? I never took you for a romantic soul. But, as it happens, a romantic soul is just what I need by my side right now. What, here? Now? Aren't we leaving? Ah, that's just the thing. Here we are, about to ride off into the unknown. Well, who knows what fate has in store for us? What if we should fall as heroes on the battlefield? How could I depart this world with a quiet heart, never having known true love? I'm a little worried about you, sir. Aren't you getting overheated inside that armour? Look, I can't just go off and get my head chopped off somewhere without first winning the heart of the girl I love. Nope, absolutely not. So are you going to help not. me or not? Absolutely fucking not! No! <laughs> what do we get back? No, get me the fuck out of this conversation! Holy shit! Holy shit! Okay, no, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. We finished the game. We did the game. I've done it, okay? I've fucking done it. I finished it. Okay, let's talk about Kingdom Come, because clearly, in the second game, he's got a romantic partner, and it is forcing us <laughs> to go ahead and fucking do that DLC before we leave. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. Let's talk about this goddamn game. Let me take my headset off for a second. Oh, my god, I have been, like, so overwhelmed with the amount of Kingdom Come that I have played the last day. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, I really struggled with this game in multiple parts, if you couldn't tell. Um, it was also one of the most surprising games I've ever played, um, in a good way. Because I have never seen a game like this released by a small studio. The closest thing that would even rival to it would be, like, Greedfall, where, like, there's so much attention to detail and so much attention to the lore, and I know that the lore is just real world history, um, but the amount of detail that is in there is mental. And I think I probably would have enjoyed this a lot more if I was a history buff, and I did know a lot more about the history before, and if I cared about learning about it, but I'm afraid that I don't. Um, I kind of just like the whole, I'm a knight, I've got a sword, let's go into the, into the big battle malarkey. Um, the cutscenes in this game were amazing, and there were a lot of times where I was like, this feels like the first season of a TV show. <laughs> like, it felt like Game of Thrones a lot of the time, with, like, just the brutality and the choreography of the fights and stuff. It was pretty good. There were certain parts of the story that I didn't like. I didn't like the whole forgery uh, side of things, because it was just long-winded and bloated, and I just feel like the story doesn't really change much if you take that out. Um, all the stuff with the monastery and shit, like, I don't know, there's just a lot of this story that I didn't really like too much, and I think it's not necessarily, like, how they told the story, but I think just the game mechanics and how the missions were structured and stuff, I just didn't really enjoy it too much. Um, I preferred the whole, um, Vranic infiltrating Vranic, sneaking around, getting captured, you know, the whole, like, scouting out Privoslavits, the siege on Privoslavits, uh, 
all of that sort of stuff I enjoyed a lot more. Um, and, like, I didn't really feel very similar with Greedfall. I didn't feel a need to go out of my way to do side missions, which I think is an issue with games like this. They really need to encourage you more and make it a little, like, feel a little bit more beneficial. And, like, a lot of the side missions for this were, like, go off and deliver this, go off and fetch this. You know, a lot of, like, glorified fetch quests, collection quests, like, just glorified radiant quests that you'd get in, like, games like Fallout and stuff. Um, and I think that that really let me down quite a bit. Um, and it's probably the reason that I'm not doing the DLC and stuff. I'm just, like, I'm really burnt out on this game. <laughs> uh, this game was a lot. Uh, there's still so much that I don't know about this game, like, with alchemy. And I'm, I still don't fully understand, like, everything related to the armor and the combat and things. But, like, we got through it. We experienced the story. I think that the, the twist with, like, Radzig being your dad is cool. Um, I definitely did not see that coming at all. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed it, but I had a lot of issues with it. It's not like the best game I've ever played, um, but I'm glad that I did play it and I'm glad that I finished it. Um, I'm glad that I didn't spend 150 hours on it like all the maniacs on Reddit keep saying about this game. Um, but yeah, I don't know if... So I wanted to play this game and sort of like, in a way, just sort of get it out of the way so that I had a reason to play the second game. But now that I've played the first game, I'm actually, like, not in a rush to play the second. <laughs> I don't know when the second is coming out, but if they were to say, like, oh, it's going to come out in November of this year, I'd be like, you know what, that's fine, I'll buy it next summer. You know, we'll get it a bit discounted and we'll buy it next summer and we'll make it another summer game. <laughs> um, I have a lot of stuff that I want to do on the channel. We've got Star Wars Outlaws coming at the end of uh, August. I believe that release is on, like, the 20-something of August, um, early access. Otherwise, it comes out, like, on a Friday, I think. I work Friday, so it's not ideal. Probably going to pay for the early access. Um, I'm still trying to work on getting my PC sorted. I'm, like, two-thirds of the way there, money-wise. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's very, very expensive. Um... But yeah, hopefully by the time we get to Star Wars Outlaws, I'm I'm all PC'd up. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. This took a lot longer for me to complete than I that I anticipated. I thought it was just going to take me a month, and it's taken me about two. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that I did get through it. I hope that my playthrough wasn't too frustrating for people to watch, <laughs> um, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.